This week's episode is brought to you by our good, beautiful, incredible friends at Budgie Smuggler. And I'm so excited, so pumped, and so proud to announce that we have Dylan Friends Custom Budgie Smugglers available now. This is huge. This is big. It is the essential item for summer and also an incredible Christmas gift for your dad. You, budgiesmuggler.com.au. Yes. Harry Oliver, welcome to the podcast, my friend. This is huge. Yes, it is huge. It is very huge. Thanks for having me. Mate, thank you so much. This has been a long time in the making. We were planning this one for a while. Yes, yes. Um, finally got you in. COVID yeah. 2019? I can't remember. They all just blur into yeah, one. It's yeah. so hard to look back into yeah. the lockdowns and everything, but it's fair to say a lot has happened since then. A lot. A lot. Oh, can I start off, actually? Sorry. <laughs> so my mate, he's, yeah. his name's Alex. He's my best mate. Yeah. Ever, ever. Yeah. I was, he is in love with you. Really? He, I'm talking like. Oh my god. I'm talking like the biggest man crush in history. Like, he. What's his name? Alex Gugolotti. Ex- there we go. And he's like. So I was, him later. I, I, was, I, was, yeah. so I was with him. Um, he actually he said. I told him last night. I was playing FIFA at his yeah. house, and I said, "You wouldn't be. You wouldn't believe what I'm doing tomorrow." And he goes, "Please tell me you're doing it. Are oh. you doing it?" I'm like, "Yes." And he goes, "Oh my god, give me a shout out, please. Please oh, give me something." Oh my god, yeah. beautiful man, Alex. We love you. Yes. Shout yes. out. To yes. Him. Massive shout out to him. So there, he's. He'll be stoked with that. He love always that. asks me to give me a little, little please, something. <laughs> so he's, he's got his little moment. They're good. Yeah. They're good. He does love it though. Right. We're going to talk about a lot today. So much for you. Um, I've been excited for this chat for a while. Love the way you've gone about it. Really see your whole career. Like you go from someone who's been a really late bloomer in footy. I don't think you even played big country. Um, you get picked up in pick five? Four. Four. Pick four. Yeah, yeah pick Melbourne, four. Melbourne bit on uh, yeah. Cal Mills. I yeah. Think, I think like four, yeah, four or five. Pick four um, and land of the Ds in in a time where, you know, the club was pretty dire to now being one of the best midfielders in the comp, I, I say, and, and a lot of people do. The Coaches Association would, would say that as well. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, and to winning a grand final. So there's plenty to go through. First, I want to talk about what's happened Um this year with the granny, uh, going into the 2021 season, what were your hopes? What were your expectations? What was the feeling like at, at the club and, and for yourself? Obviously, I think it was a pretty big year for the club in general because the year before we were playing pretty good footy and then we dropped those. We had two games up in uh, the uh, Cairns and we lost both them to Sydney and Freo and sort of cost ourselves finals and we probably thought we should have been playing finals last year or 2020. Um, and then, yeah, so obviously huge expectations. I think Goody had a bit of... Like even a bit of stuff about there, just mm. lightens in like a bit of pressure. I think the club had a lot of pressure as well. Um, and yeah, so we had a good chat down Settlers Run. I was think it was just before December, just like put everything to bed. Where's Settlers Run? Sorry, uh, down Sorrento. So you had a, you had a camp down there, did you? Yeah, we had like a had a golf day, and then we just had like a little like which is just like a lock-in session sort of about culture and the environment and all that, and just put sort of put everything out there, and it sort of just. I don't know. I think personally, I think as if you ask project anyone, it's probably just started our probably 20, 20, 20, 21 campaign there. So we sort of look back on that a fair bit and Fuck. yeah. So it was pretty. It was pretty uh, unbelievable. Was that the whole team or like a yeah. select few? No, no, yeah. the whole team was down there. So like yeah, like literally we had a guy called Jimmy Plunkett run a uh, I think it's called a growth session. Yep. And there's people on the table and we just sort of had a piece of paper and just write and everything what we thought and. Got it all out there and just put us put, put everything to bed in 2021, uh, 2020, and just wanted to focus on yeah being the best club and best uh, environment we could be in 2021. What like I, I know, again I, I know a lot of this would be inside intel and and don't go into it as much as you yeah. can. But what came out for you most prevalent in that session? What came out for you where you were just like fuck this is a big change? There were so many things that yeah. like we, we like you just that weren't being said that were we just sort of people just would stand up and just say it and yeah just like. Um, for your accountability on pretty much everything you do and you're just rocking up late to like tiny little things like don't let it slide so we just had a, we probably had a high preference on that just one percent is everything yeah, yeah. Like just everything i think just just got the and we're just building like a great culture so then we can have younger boys come in and they just seamlessly fit in and yeah it was yeah which is really honestly really good 2021 season um what's the defining moment such a long year and i think you said it earlier, like it started back in the off-season, but it's so hard to stay motivated for the whole time. Like yeah. you're going to have ebbs and flows. You guys obviously came out and dominated the first half of the year, but there was a time when, you know, as an outside perspective, you're like, oh, shit, have Melbourne peaked too early? Like is it, is it you know, they already played their best footy? Um, and I'll admit, like I thought that that was, that was what was going to happen, but something changed, like something sort of clicked or was it just momentum form that sort of got you back going? Uh, I think 
as, as you know, yeah. playing football and being part of a football club, you're not going to win every single week. Um, you want to try to, but um, you're going to build momentum. And obviously, we had a pretty long stretch of like nine, ten weeks that we're playing good footy. And yeah, we're probably due to lose a couple, which I personally I believe that's probably the best thing for us. Mm. We had a we had I think a game against Brisbane. We played pretty poor. We should have lost that game. There was a couple of games we should have lost. We ended up getting over line, but we probably shouldn't have. And then yeah, we had a few bad losses. We had one to Adelaide. And, uh, I think the other few losses in there and a few draws. I think it sort of just, uh, yeah, kick-started us again. Um, and the second half of the year, we had a good win against Port. Um, and sort of, yeah, got our belief back and just a little bit, we built a little bit of momentum going to finals as well. That Geelong win as well, I think, down at, at um, mm. GMHBA felt like it was... You look at that now and, you know, in hindsight, and you go, fuck, it was probably inevitable you weren't gonna, you were going to win the granny after that. Looking at history as well, to go back, yeah. Melbourne fans wouldn't want to be brought up, but losing that game over, like, you know, eight years ago probably one of the darkest days for Melbourne Footy Club. Mm. Um, I know you weren't a part of it, but you, I, I can still imagine people remember that and bring it up. To go down there, play, and your back's against the wall when you win that game must have been huge for the footy club. I think Petrarca was nearly, you know, tearing up after the, yeah, after the game. I think everyone was, yeah. yeah. I couldn't even watch when Gwani was taking that kick. Mm. But um, <laughs> yeah. I was having a good chat of danger facing the other way. Um, but yeah, it was yeah, it was seriously something else. And we'll sing the song and just sitting down there and just reflect on the whole year. It's probably been a pretty long year anyway with all the COVID stuff and everything going on. But um, yeah, it was something else, obviously for the fans as well and supporters. Your uh, form this year was was incredible, and we said before, Coach Association Award. Um, you know, you nearly win the Brownlow as well. You probably in a team where you got too many good players taking votes of each other, but. The consistency of being able to keep backing up week after week after week, honestly, like I, I think that's the hardest thing in AFL. What what do you do? Like what what do you do to think you can keep doing that? Like is it momentum, is it belief, is it something you do during the week or is it just in your head you just know you can do it now? So probably when I first got to the club, um, I wasn't too professional. Yeah. Probably a few things that happened and then at the end of my first year. I uh, had a good chat with Brendan McCartney and there's a player called Billy Stretch and he's probably the most professional bloke I've ever met. Really good runner. Very good runner, very good in the gym. Everything just perfect, just ticks things off. So he sort of got me into a little bit of a habit of doing things um, just every day. Um, so I did that for this, my second pre-season. And I sort of came my second year and I had like just a, a week. So basically every week if I did the same thing, tick things off every day, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. About the whole week I felt like I was just... Uh, I, was, I thought I'd, I'd play well. Like, I like I just, in myself, I knew I was going to play well. So, I've so you got, like, a checklist where you go, like, all right, I'll get my recovery done, yeah. get my extra physio, yeah. do an extra weight session. Yeah. It gives me the confidence to do my thing. Yeah, so I've been doing that for a while. Obviously, a few things have changed um, since then. A few things, taken a few things out and put a few more things in Yeah. Um, to make myself feel better. And, yeah, I've changed my focus on different things for this year as well. So, yeah, it's been, a, yeah, a lot of things. But, yeah, the day, if you do the Monday to Friday, so you have the belief to play well on the weekend. It's uh, that sounds well and good, but like I did that, and that doesn't like work for everyone. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's got to be something else, and I, I, there might not be the answer there, but I, I, there must just be like that internal drive or something else that you're doing. Because I, I'll be honest, a lot of players would do that, yeah, and it doesn't have yeah. the same impact as yeah. what you've been able to do. Yeah, um, I had a good chat with Goody in off season as well. Yeah, obviously my first in my form was a little bit better this year than it has been previously was, I had a he had a focus on just three three big rocks is what he calls it yep. so I just had the main training days so just focus on that train well if you train well during the week then you should be able to bring on game day and then he said sleep and just eat well so I probably took those second two actually no the first one as well I probably had more focus on them this year and then so it just made me feel better just as well. ticking those like yeah. simple boxes just simple boxes yeah, yeah. Hey, um, if you're happy to, let's go. Let's go back to your first few years in, in the system. Mm -hmm. um, we're chatting off air before about you know the way you came into the draft. You're a bit of a late bloomer. I, I still cannot believe the fact that you didn't, um, you know, you you weren't even playing the country, let alone really in, in a in a recruiter's eye at the start of that year to then get up and go pick four or five um, in the draft. What changed for you that year? Like in your under 18 year, like do you think made you? Did you always have the belief? Did you just not get selected? Like, why were you um, why were you selected or um, bolted so late? So I was uh, back in my very early years. I got back yeah. like a fair bit under twelves. I played uh, bottom age and top age under twelves, which yep. is, doesn't mean too much. But <laughs> at the time, I thought you're home. Yeah, I thought fuck it, I'm gonna play AFL. I'm free stoked. Like, I thought yeah, um, yeah. And then I sort of didn't grow too much until like 15, 16. So I was pretty small. 
Um, and then I got OP in my, like, my 17th year, uh, when I was 17. So I didn't yep. play for my bottom age year when I was at the Pioneers. So, yeah, sort of, sort of giving up hope there. And then Darren Oger of the Bushies called me up and he literally said, you want to come over and play for the Bush train? He was like, we'll see if we can fix your groins or whatever. Sort of my, must have saw something in me. And then I was like, oh, yeah. Doesn't really bother me. I sort of just focus on my school. Oh, yeah. Um, and I had my good mate I was at school with Josh Shack. Um, Josh Shacky? Yes. Very you good. We went mate. to school together? Yeah. GV, GS, Gone Valley Grammar. Shout out. Yeah, shout out. Yeah. Um, we got a school reunion this Saturday, actually, as well, uh, which would be good. But um, yeah, so he was touted as a top three pick since he's been 16. So yeah, I was like, it was pretty cool. And I had no chance. So I was sort of just going there playing footy for fun. And then, yeah, I don't even, I don't even know what happened. On the second half of the year, I started playing all right and yeah and then out of nowhere went pick four which is i still couldn't believe that either actually i went so early pick four did you nearly who was the pick after melbourne essendon essendon so darcy parish darcy parish okay so i called from essendon i was gonna go there so i thought i was going to essendon yeah that draft's pretty incredible now when you think about it yeah. isn't it like the players who got picked up mm-hmm. um, weedering weedering if you can't pick yourself who do you reckon is the best player from that draft now? Give me a top three that you sort of look at in those drafts now. Stays definitely. number one? I think so. Yep. Oh, well, yeah, he's going to be a star for the next probably 15 years. He's yep. played to his 40. Then Parrish. Yep. Very, oh, Mills has been good. Josh Dunkley, he's been really with few injuries. Yeah. And he was yeah. pretty late. Sydney didn't want him either. Yeah. I did. Sydney didn't, because he was farthest under yeah, Sydney. That was that, that was I, I never quite understood that. Yeah, that was weird. Um, no, nah, I don't know. I, honestly, there's in our draft now, there's so many... <laughs> very good players but yeah, yeah waiting so I think he still says one and then there's just a toss up between the next yeah it's literally a raffle between the next however many yeah. players impressive players super draft yeah. um, for years to come uh, get to the D's we've spoken about um, you know where the club was at at that stage personally where were you at do you think that at that time um, you were ready for AFL nah not a chance I didn't even think I'd play at all I just sort of got you there. You didn't think you'd play? No, nah, I was just a, sort of a kid from the country, just probably a bit overwhelmed at the time. Um, just, I, yeah, I was only pretty much playing footy just for, for the fun of it. I didn't, never really seen the, like, the professional and all the, uh, yeah, what all the AOS kids had never seen any of that. So I was just literally just rocking up the training and then playing on the weekend. So once I got the AFL and they're talking about diet and doing this, doing that, waking up, this, doing that, like all this, it was, it was sort of just probably, yeah, probably too much at the start and I was probably a bit overwhelmed by it and then we had a couple of early draft picks we had Gussie Brayshaw yep um, Track yep uh, Nathan Jones we had a pretty good midfield at the time Bernie Vince so I was didn't think I was going to play too much and I think it was a couple of injuries so I, yeah got a couple of games that I don't think I should have still don't think I should have played um, yeah I played like 10 games that year and yeah, it's probably more just an eye opener just to see how, like how hard you actually do have to work and what you have to do every week to yeah to play AFL football. Being a young bloke, you know, back when I was sort of playing footy and, and you see so many guys that um, I was just saying, like, I just had absolutely no idea what it took at the highest level. Do you have empathy now for like young kids coming through and you can sort of help them out a bit more or like see where they were at at that stage absolutely yeah. absolutely kids come in wide eyed and just happy to be drafted and I completely understand it like it's everyone goes at their own rate I reckon yeah you can't you can help them out but I don't reckon force them too much you just want to sort of nurture them through it I guess because yeah, if they don't want to do it, like at the end of the day, if you don't want to do it yourself personally, then you're not going to do it. So mm. it's a good way to yeah help them out and do it the right way. Um, but yeah, most of most of the players, yeah, they they want to do it. They will. When do you though feel that you actually like? No, I, I, do, I belong here now. Like I, I belong. Was there a moment or is there a game where you just sort of tore it apart or you played a good role or had a conversation with the coach after? You're like, yeah, this is you know I, I deserve to be here. Yeah. So my second year was a bit of a. It was I played. I think I was yeah I played all right actually that year but I still didn't think I don't know it was a weird feeling mm. I actually ended up winning the BNF as well that year in your second year yeah but I was which was yeah I don't know it definitely wasn't my second year it was a weird one I feel playing all right football but I didn't feel like I f- it was probably as good as I should have been it was yeah. Probably, yeah probably maybe like a couple of months maybe two or three months in my third year yep so yeah um, I started playing all right and sort of felt like I'd, you sort of get that yeah that feeling you get not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
yeah so yeah so it was sort of yeah i think it just it was maybe like around 10 around there yeah in my third year i thought like yeah like i've actually feel like i belong here like yeah. i feel like i can play football what because you know we had max on the show um you know you love max uh, yeah. everyone loves max corn and i asked him um who his favorite midfielder is to play with you know, do you know who he said hope he said me he did say you he said that you two just have this connection on the field um whenever you rock up you know he just knows it's going to you i think maybe it's that all the other boys aren't fit enough to get there <laughs> as, as quick as you are there's just there's honestly there's this weird little like there's just something yeah. between us two i don't know what it is but yeah like what you said yeah it's just it's what's just what's like, it like explain this like in a game like do you, because i have a theory on i never really played midfield and i have this theory on midfielders in in afl that you know, you always see them practicing these routes like after training and yeah. there might be like three set plays. But either, as soon as the game starts, never there's happened. no fucking way no, that happens. Never, it never, never happens. Never happens. Like, I, and I just yeah. couldn't get that. Yeah. I was like, well, what do you want me to do this when this? I know yeah. this isn't going to happen? Yeah. Um, because what happens is you get there and at the end of the day, the Bruckman just puts it to the same bloke every week. Yeah. So what what do you two do differently? Do you train together or is it, or is it just you uh, just know where he's going, he knows where you are? We've played together for six years now. Yeah. Or seven, six years. Um, and I've yeah been in the midfield much that yeah the whole time. So I don't know, I think it's just the time. Yeah, I think it's just yeah. time together. And obviously you now traction there. We have got Vines. We have got Jimmy Jordan, Thomas Sparrow, little boys coming through as well. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just to, once we're on the field and yeah, it's just a little, just like a bit of chemistry and you just, you just know I can. We got a pretty good thing with like my timing with him. So yep. compared to other ruckmen, I play with. I sort of struggle with other ruckmen, but with him, I just literally know when I've got to get there. Yep. Um, he knows where to put it, and I'll be there pretty much. So yeah, it sort of works out pretty well. Going on to the granny, um, fifty-six years, crazy, mm. a long time. Going into that game, did you have like? A list of focuses like you said before of like what you needed to do to keep it simple like was there a specific role you were playing on the game was there anything that you had to do like what was good he saying you like just clary go and do your thing or yeah yeah pretty much yeah he just said just do what you do every week same game every week yeah. saying, which you was saying to everyone he's yeah. just do, do 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 what you've done the last 25 weeks 24 weeks and we'll be right we'll be fine we came into halftime we're down by 20 points whatever and That's we were sitting there and i think half was about to start crying we're like oh no like we wasted like the whole year and then yeah we're just yeah we're pretty flat and i don't even know what happened we just sort of <laughs> Something, happened. Like, Something yeah. happened. I don't know what happened. We, uh, I don't know. We we got pretty lucky with a few things. Yeah, you know, I felt like in, in the midfield, a few balls that hit off someone's knee, and we end up popping out the front of the contest and got those four or five goals in a row, which was just yeah, incredible. But yeah, I think that was a little bit of luck involved and will to win. Yeah. All right. Stick with me on this. I'm gonna try and just freestyle on something. Yeah. So I think Melbourne this whole year everyone knew how good Melbourne were, but I still think there was that underlying factor of people going, oh, Melbourne, you know, historically, you know, like two, three, four years ago, but they're going to let you down in the end. There's going to be that point where they go, fuck, they're going to let you down. Yeah, that's what, we, yeah. And there was that point in the grand final where that there was that point. Mm. There was that point where you're going, okay, maybe this is that moment. Like there is that moment where Melbourne might not come back from this, mm. but you did. Yeah. Well, like, do you know? <laughs> Or is it just now? Well, do you, do you think, think that there's just that ingrained belief from, from yeah, everything else? Yeah, I think like, we've got rid of, I think we've most of, I think all of us have got rid of the like, outside noise yeah. anyway. So, like, I don't think when we, when I think it was, I think Bond kicked his third goal, whatever. Yeah, I think Janison kicked, like, took that mark yeah. as well in the goal square. Yeah. And you think, I was thinking, fuck, here we go. This, yeah. this is big. Yeah, I was thinking that too for a little bit. I was like, oh, gee. I was more, I was more thinking, like, fuck, it's a long year. Like, yeah. <laughs> Can't really, like it's a long year like we've, and we've been away for home for six weeks and i was like oh we'd like we sort of have to win like yeah like, we're like what's the point of, like doing all this that's what i was for me personally and then we just, i think we we're walking back and gorney brought us all in all the midfielders in and he literally said like, like let's just let's go like we've got to go now basically like this is it and wow. yeah <laughs> something something happened there and track turned it on Basically, put 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 uh, the team on his shoulders. So yeah, it's pretty nice to just sit on sit on his shoulders and just get the free ride. No, I think <laughs> I think you're underselling yourself there a lot, mate. You were very very pivotal um, in that game. And Goody was actually stopping by the studio last week. I didn't want to drop that. I am friends with Simon Goodwin now as well. He was he yes. was swinging by and he, he said that um, you know the roles that you, Viney, um, and 
uh, Sparrow. Yes, yeah, Sparrow. So I, I didn't know a lot about Tom Sparrow. Like I know he's obviously a good player and warrants his position in the team. But played on that day is is uh, is pivotal to the win as much as you know Petrarca going and kicking. Mm, he was outstanding. Tom Sparrow, incredible. Um, I'm a big fan of grand finals, and I think on that big stage, there's always those like little moments that swing both ways like you're saying before about like how bomb sort of like fired up a bit and kicked a goal and janice and there's a time does anything stand out to you when you were like playing that wouldn't even be brought up on tv or or anything like that where you, the game sort of slowed down and you just went fuck that was huge um it's funny every time we get asked this every time we're talking about this morning actually every time someone gets asked about it, it's always the hell when gorney got tackled by caleb daniel they're like yeah. is that it is that yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh let's get him yeah they're like nah nah nah, nah. Like, I, I don't even think i saw that to be honest i think i completely missed it but i think um we just couldn't score for like i think we scored for like 30 minutes or mm. something ridiculous like we hadn't scored for i don't even know how long and uh, Harmsy actually got a it was like a, it was a clearance and uh, Gorney hit it back to Harmsy and he got it and he literally kicked it to Tata and he kicked the goal and he got that first goal on the board and that was for me like, like, like we just needed a goal yeah like we needed like it was just that feeling of like oh, what's going like why can't we score like we're getting in there and we're just coming straight back out but when Tata marked that ball who's Tata sorry Bally Fritch Bally Fritch sorry yeah, sorry yeah, yeah. I sorry, thinking, no, sorry sorry about I, that I am one. mates with Bally Fritch <laughs> <laughs> no I, yeah so yeah um, Tata me Frida, yeah, he um, oh, yeah. frittata, yeah, is that frittata. what it is? Yeah, why is it frittata? No oh. idea. Frit- 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 frittata, okay. yeah, so I call him Tata. Yeah, Tata. Um, yeah, he marked him all, and he's the best kicker I've ever seen. So I basically walked back to center square, and he kicked that goal, and I was like, oh, like there's a little bit of hope here, that would be right, I think. And then yeah, sort of just that's, that was my pivotal moment. Yeah, when just literally Harms, he got that, he had that one, like just it was a, just straight through, with the boundary throw in, um, and yeah, got the goal, goes back, got goes back home. Going post grand final, hmm. okay, you win, siren goes, you guys are going, you know, mental, obviously an incredible win. What's the next, you know, 24, 48 hours like? Um, pretty big. Had, we had uh, we got to stay at the ground, have yeah. a few drinks there. Um, I think we left there like 11 or 12 and then we went to some, uh, I don't even know what the place was called. Yeah. Um, went there for two, I don't know, maybe that was like 2 or 3 a.m. and then we went back to the hotel. And then we had an early start next day. I had a, I had a um, sorry, a footy, I think it was nine, nine years or something, footy yep. show, so I was, I was a little bit dusty. Yeah. Knocking up that, I felt better. And then yeah. we went out to, uh, we went on some stage or somewhere and had like, I, don't even know, I can't really remember too much of it. And then we went to this, uh, I think it's called OBH in Cotter's Yeah. It was probably one of the best days of my life. Really? I mean, every, everyone's life, I think. Yeah. We was just, that open to the public or just? Nah, just us. Yeah. So just us boys and there was like a few staff and it was that was like yeah sort of just like we had the cup there and like that was probably when it starts to sink in a little bit but still, i still feel like it hasn't sunk in quite just yet either yeah at the same time but yeah that day was yeah very nice now again this doesn't answer this as you will but there was mm. there was rumors floating around in melbourne that that the two parties, the two teams did meet somewhere. Is there any truth to this? No, no. Okay. I can put that to bed right now. So I'm so Latham Vandermeer, who's yep. a doggy, he's my yep. best, like one of my best mates. Yeah, yeah. From he's from Rupna. I'm from Rupna. Me, him, and Jai, simply another bloke. Yeah, one of my best mates as well. We're all from Rupna. So we were up. So we walked in, and the doggies boys got the booth, and then a few other Melbourne boys like, oh, we want to get a booth too. And so we sort of worked our way up we went upstairs they were downstairs um and then we're up there having a few drinks whatever i went down i was texting Lath. i sent Lath a message like oh, what are you doing what are you up to blah blah walked downstairs had a chat to him and yeah shaki was there as well so i was sitting in the booth with the doggies boys yeah having a good chat with them like, oh what's like what's going on what are you boys doing up there? yeah and i was like oh god so i started getting out of the black like, stepping out of the booth i'm like, getting out of here like i'm i'm out i'm done i'm like i don't know what's happened he's, no no hang on Who, who's so nice we're like what like, who's been throwing ice at us? And I was like, no, nah, honestly, I'm, I've been... And then Laith was, was talking to him, JJ, like, no, no, he's been with us, I don't know what's going on. So we had a chat to him, but it was nothing. Like, honestly, yeah. it got blown out. I don't even know how people found out about it, to be honest. But yeah. we would have had a laugh about it. It was it was honestly nothing. And then it got put to bed and we all had, yeah, great night together. And, Good. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of um, big jewels of, of those two teams to come, which is, is very exciting. Yourself, you win a flag, you have probably a career best year, you, you're in incredible form. How do you get better? 
I honestly haven't really thought about it too much. I've lost a bit of weight. I want yeah, to get you are looking extremely lean. Yeah, so I wanted, I lost a bit of weight. So I wanted. To Why is that? What's the reasoning behind that? Because uh, you already were traveling very well. Like, I don't know. I just felt like I could. So in the last probably uh, month or so, probably two months, of the year, I was probably a little bit, not a little bit heavier. Like I mean, like one or two kilos, but yeah. I probably felt like I wasn't running as well as I was at the start of the year. Mm. Um, so I just wanted, to, yeah, I just wanted to see how it go if I'm. I've still been doing all my weights and stuff and I'm feeling yep. stronger in the gym um, and I'm running alright at the moment fingers crossed I run alright Monday and the coach is happy but yeah. no I lost, think I've lost I've met down to about 86, 87 so oh, yeah. Lost, yeah lost about 4 3 or 4 kilos I think so I'm feeling yeah I just want to try something else out honestly just see if I could run a bit more because it's a modern game I think I feel personally um, yeah you've got to be you got to run. Yeah, to it's, run. it's interesting, isn't it? Because like from an outside perspective, it looks like you, you do cover the ground really well. Mm. But to hear that now with like limited rotations mm. and, and quicker, like that new rule with um, the man, the mark rule, it has just quickened the game up so much more, hasn't it? Yeah, I think another there's, uh, a player that I've watched a lot, actually Sam Walsh, the way he runs, he's <laughs> just unbelievable. Isn't oh, it? It's, yeah. I can't believe he, yeah, I think it was his third year this year. Third year, third, I think. I can't believe how good he yeah. was. Oh, like, and the way he runs, he's lean as and runs all day and he's still strong. So I don't think it really matters if you're, what, three or four kilos lighter, you're still probably going to be the same strength, but probably affects your running a lot. Mm. Like that, diff, like the difference between the running that I feel now, running like 86, 87, running at like 90, 91, like was, is like completely different. Like I feel like I can run for... Yeah, way longer. I don't feel much better. So, yeah. What um, like you know, I know you're a big fan of um the show, and I know you'd be knowing that I've got my marathon next week, and like the running that I've been doing for that, like I'm really and loving looking it. Very fit. Thank you very much. I, I'm I'm loving it. Like it's just long distance, really, really easy, just chill running. I went up into Sydney a couple of weeks ago and did a running session with the Giants boys, and I was like, fuck, I'm gonna be so fit. I'm gonna smoke these guys. The running of an AFL midfielder versus training for a marathon completely is the it couldn't it felt like i'd never ran before in my life yeah and i'd just forgotten how hard that was mm. so quickly like what what are some of the sessions that you guys are doing this morning so this morning was our, our longer one we did a three minute run two minute run one minute run yeah and then a two minute run a one minute run and then a couple of 30 second runs and that's when you say long session as well that they're the longest you really run isn't it mm. like yeah which i hate I yeah hate that. But do you know, how funny is that to think that when you finish footy, yeah, the longest run you've really done is like two kilometers. Yeah, I know it's scary. And I'm talking. I talk to my mates. Like, oh, I've been for a ten to fifteen k run. Yeah, what? what? How'd you do that? Yeah, I mean, trust. Believe me, it's a lot easier than you think. <laughs> it's a lot easier than a you know, well, the short stuff. Three minutes for me is like cat, like max. Like yeah, cat, like I anything more than that. Um, but the shorter stuff that you're doing, what, yeah. well, how does that Easy. stay I, up at the moment? What, I what find that guys, easy. Yeah. Just like, I like if it's, we do like on a Monday and a Friday where it's like one to one, I think. So we're like yeah. a 20 second run or a 40 second run. It's just like 20 on, 20 off, 40 on, 40, 40 off. I'll find that easy. But you know what's annoying is because people will listen to that and think that sounds so easy. I know. Where it's like, yeah. it's the hardest yes. thing you can yeah. ever do in so your I'd, life. So I'll talk to my mates back home like, oh, I've got this session. They're like, oh, what is it sent to them? I'm like, oh, yeah, and you play AFL. I'm like, yeah. no, no, like it's actually hard. Yeah, like, yeah. honestly, that you should like come do it. They're like, nah, nah. I'm yeah, gonna do my ten k. Yeah, nah, my mates aren't like that. They're yeah. doing that either. Yeah, okay. um, yeah. So, it, yeah, I find that just because I can stop and just like, well, it's 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 game like, isn't yeah. it? Like, it's sprint to yeah, a, sp- it is. sprint to a stoppage, sprint to the next. Like, yeah. it's, it's really relatable. Whereas you're not going to run ten k's in a row on a oh. field. Sammy Walsh probably would to be honest. Sammy Walsh probably would. Just keep running. <laughs> who, um, speaking of Sammy Walsh, who else do you look at in the comp and you, you want to take something from their game? Like, who do you admire? Wouldn't mind being able to mark the ball. Yeah. Um, I think Fife. Dukies. Yeah, if you Dukies, Fife. You are a bit bigger than I. Like, you're a big boy. Isn't you yeah. quite tall? You're, yeah. How big are you? 190? Yeah, 188, 189. Yeah. yeah. Just bad, but yeah, pretty much. I probably grown. I probably am 190 now, actually. Yeah. Probably grown a little bit, but two, two dodgy shoulders that. Uh, two. T- too flush at the moment. Yep. Um, you but lose a bit of confidence going up. Yeah. Side, so. Yeah. So I've got three surgeries on them now. So I sort of set it back a little bit. Yep. A um, few knocks here and there. But yeah, I wouldn't mind being able to mark the ball. Tracks, he's marking. Actually, he's one on one marking. He's just any marking is mm. the best I've seen. Like, he'd probably be the best one on one mark. 
on the ground, like he's in just one on one. It's just ridiculous. He's a bit of a ball, isn't he? Oh yeah. And you probably even you probably I reckon you'd back him over Steve May. Wouldn't mind seeing those two. Really? Guys. I actually think I would. I'd like to hear that. I would love to see Steve. I think thinks he's like the toughest he, bloke in the he world. Is. He's a big teddy bear though. I'd smoke. <laughs> you would, yeah. He's weak as piss. <laughs> um Yeah, interesting. That's yeah. very interesting. That yeah. No, nah, he's inc- he was at training, he just like sticks his arm out and like duck, like puts his feet down yeah. He may as well just give up because he's just that strong. Where Melbourne are now, like you, as you said, you've recorrected this this uh, stigma around, um, you know, not being able to finish things or, or not see it through. What, what to next? Do you think there's a ceiling on it? Like, do you look at the your list now and you think, fuck, like we're still so young, we're still hungry, um, and we can keep going? Or do you think that sometimes, like, is there something in the back of your mind where? And you almost need it to know that it's not going to happen is you think, fuck, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Like, we've still got more to do. I think this off-season is obviously going to be a big indicator for everyone. Yeah. And how we're going to go into the pre-season. Um, but the way... There was, I think there was maybe 15 or 20 of us at Gosh's Pate this morning. Yeah. At 8 a.m. running. And we were... There was about 10 of us at the 10. There was 10 of them at the uh, Gosh's. And the way those boys were running... I know it's a small sample size, mm. but the way they're running and the, how good Nick, everyone's in... I feel like we all know it's not just going to happen, but we can do it, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so obviously we've got to work hard and we've got belief in ourselves to do it. We've just got to put in the work. We're not just going to rock up day one or round one. We're just going to win, I think. And, yeah, some of the boys, I can't believe how well they're running, how fit they are and how strong they are in the gym at the moment. It's not even – we haven't even started pre-season yet, which is, yeah, sort of a bit scary, I think. Yeah, it is scary. How much does, like, the opportunity of playing – I know it's a long way away and you, it's, it's all about process and, you know, you've got to take one week at a time. But the idea of actually playing a home grand final at Melbourne at the MCG, like... Yeah, very. Yeah. I think that would be your nearly number one driver for nearly everyone because um, obviously we've got to celebrate over in Perth, but obviously friends and family weren't weren't there and, like, our, well, our heart and soul supporters weren't there either because obviously we're going to fly over from from uh, Melbourne so yeah and to play on the G is that's every kid's dream playing winning grand final at the, at the G we won we, we won one which is still another like unbelievable yeah. dream but it was in Perth so it was a little bit yeah a little bit different in a way so yeah you can be, question it it's harder to so you could say it's nearly harder to win one yeah in a way as well but I know yeah. what you're saying yeah you, yeah there, there's that romantic yeah it is being able to do that MCG Melbourne yeah. home ground yeah family everyone yeah. there's everyone there and it's just the feeling yeah um, yeah, when Richard won their flag and Swan Street was pretty much on fire yeah. and cars were flipping over. And Where would Melbourne have their, what street would it be? Like somewhere in like Turak or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm mean, nah, yeah. nah, actually I don't even know. Somewhere, somewhere fancy. Yeah. All these supporters. Fancy, yeah. <laughs> What's next for Clayton Oliver? What do you want to do? Football, off field life, what's the plan? You just, bought a, you just bought a house? Yeah. Congrats. Thank you very much. Yeah, very Where, exciting. Where'd you go? Uh, I went in Camberwell. Oh, just, lovely. Uh, lovely. Off, a little bit off Turak Road. Ooh. Yeah, she's beautiful. Yeah. What's your address? Uh, <laughs> 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 um, um, so yeah, so I'm uh, yeah, very stoked. I um, got pretty lucky with it, actually. You're going to move in? Yeah, moved in. Yeah, moved, moved in. in. Yeah. yeah. You got any of the boys living with you or nah, you run out? No, no, no. Just uh, by myself at the moment. Yep. Um, which is nice, uh, pretty cruisy. Yeah. Don't mind my own, uh, a bit of time to myself. So it's been uh, doing a few things, just fixing up. Uh, the front the front fence is actually falling in, which I'm a bit disappointed okay. about. I can come around. <laughs> Thank you. Um, they're, they're, um, they're not, yeah, so I need to do a few things too, which is actually, um, I didn't want to buy a house that was uh, like modern and mm-hmm. had nothing to do with it. So yep. it's got a fair bit to do with it. So I just want to, yeah, just, probably just yeah tick a few boxes and do a few things here and there and yeah i've yeah get a landscaper in and get the driveway fixed up i've got a few little things yeah I'm, just, yeah I'm pretty excited to just do all that better homes and gardens yeah yeah, yeah. it is exciting. actually i love it so i've been doing i love landscaping getting yeah. in the garden i love my lawnmower it's got a lawnmower oh you got a lawnmower what do you got with it yeah what what lawnmower i've you know what i've got the um uh, a battery one so i'm looking after the oh. environment a lithium ion battery yeah elon musk so yeah. uh he's looking after the environment so i thought about do the right thing yeah cost it a fair bit, so yeah. hopefully, right thing. <laughs> hopefully, yeah. hopefully the charging all the time isn't defeating the purpose of it. I don't think it does. Yeah, no, I don't really know about solar, that stuff. I think, yeah. Fingers crossed. That'd be yeah. good. Um, and what about like after footy? Yeah, I know it's a long way yeah. away. Like I, need to, you, I need to start doing something. Well, you don't really like, I think <laughs> you do. You, you need to, I think the big thing that I've 
always learn. I, sometimes I hate asking this question because you don't know what you want to do until you know what you want to do. So you just got to work out what you don't want to do. Yeah. So I'm, yes, I'm, that's what I'm, I just, Tell I know what I don't want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. Cool. So I know what I don't want to do. So I'm just sort of like, I don't want to, I talk to boys and they've been going uni for what, 14 years or something because yeah. they can only do like one or two subjects per year. And I was doing commerce. I think I did my first three years. I think I did like six subjects maybe, maybe less. And I was like, I'm not going to get some 30 and then realise I don't want to do this. Yeah. Like if I was a, if I was on like a, like a sorry, like a normal uni student who was over four years, I probably would have just like stuck with it and done it. But I was like, I'm not going to do this for like my whole career and then get to the end of my career and be like, fuck, I wasted every single one of my days off or like yeah. every single second of like, and then I'm like, I don't even want to do anything to do with like that. Yeah. So I sort of, I sort of like took myself out of it and had a good chat at the club, what I want to do. Um, but yeah, I was, I, I think something, I feel like something will just pop up. Not, yep. not pop up, but I think I feel like I'll be attracted to something that I want to do. Yeah. Do you want to stay in footy? Do you think that'll be like, would you uh, coach or something like that? I don't know. I wouldn't mind. Uh, I reckon once I finish footy, I'll probably, I want to head home. Yeah. Probably head back to the country for a little bit. Yeah. I feel so. And I'll probably end up coming back to Melbourne. But yeah, I think, yeah, if you have to have a family and all that, I think, I, yeah, I would like to do that in the country. But um, yeah, that's a, that's probably a while away. Where from. is, where is Marutna? Marutna, sorry. Uh, it's in near Shepparton. Uh, oh, SPC. SPC. Yes, no, everyone, no, everyone says fruit. that. Yes, yeah, everyone yeah, yeah, says yeah. that. Every single person. Yes. <laughs> Spot. Where's Rumor? Oh, no. Shepparton? Yeah. Ah, SPC. SPC, yes. 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 Yeah. What would you do back there? Um, I don't know. Just chill. Yeah, we might just sit in the goal square and just be pretty overweight. Just what are they, Rumor? No, what are the, the... The cats. The cats. The cattery. The cats. Okay. Yeah. You and Josh Aggie back there. Ah, uh, he's a Seymour lad, actually. We'll oh, he's he's, we we reverse each other. Okay. Yeah. Life fair to me will be there. Yeah, enjoy. We got, we had a little actually talk about it the other night when I was we went to their house yeah. for the races. And we'll <laughs> be very excited. Yes. Marupna fans all, and locals will be very excited yes. to hear this. So they've uh, got uh, you know that point. Have you heard of the point system? The, yeah, yeah. You'd all be one pointers. No, zero. Because we're all locals. Oh, you're oh, juniors. Is it one? Or is it, yeah, we're all juniors. Yeah, so I think it's, it's one. I think it's a one, one pointer. Oh, we I thought think. it was zero. Oh, there we yeah. go. We're about to clear that. Yeah, yeah. So I thought it was zero. So we were like laughing. There's like, there's three of us. We're like, all oh, we're zero. But if we had have not been from Rupna, we're five. Yeah, right? five points. Yeah. Yeah. So people are getting dropped. Like, he's like, why are you getting dropped this week? Oh, yeah, because the five point is coming back. Yeah. And I'm worth two. Yeah. And he's one. So he plays ahead of me. And we're like, yeah, it's interesting how it works. Yeah. It's very interesting how it yeah. works. But. Yeah, I'd get dropped. Drop drop worry about that. <laughs> yeah, I might get on this. I'll come down. <laughs> yeah, come down the cat there. Oh, they're going. They're not too flash at the moment, so no. probably not. Maybe a bit of help. That's exciting, um, mate. It's been an honour, pleasure, privilege to have you on the show. Learned so much. Really looking forward to seeing you go next year. Um, I think you're going to level up again, which is which is scary to think, but. Um, yeah, really, really honoured, mate, and, and beautiful uh, to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Great time.